And we're going to take a look at this Howard Miller mantle clock. Uh, it's got a Hermley movement in it. And we're going to take a look according to the date stamp I looked up. Uh, this one was manufactured in 1988. This is the movement in the case. It is a Hermley 340-020 with a uh, balance wheel escapement. At the hairspring, it doesn't have the floating balance in it. But we'll be taking a look at it. Here's the label that was in it. The model of this clock is a 613-102. Okay. One of the things we need to do is just take the hands off. Man, that thing is tight. Okay, there we go. Take the nut off. Right hand. Our hand. Okay. Okay, bezel doesn't look in bad shape. Probably take this dial off so I can clean up the case. Just remove a little different. This is not held in with screws. It's got some uh, nuts on a bolts coming through from the front. family and the Skarzinskis and Julie and Marilyn and us, I mean, to celebrate. The three girls all have birthdays. Well, what three girls? Dawn, Amy, and Julie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Dawn, oh, yeah, Amy's is in March, isn't it? Right, but we celebrate all three yeah. of them together. Julie's was the same day yeah. as Mara's and uh, Dawn's is this month. Yeah. And yours is Sunday, so. Yeah, it'd be the, uh, mine will be the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll just forget about my birthday. Time to forget about it. <laughs> anyway, do you want to go to lunch with the group? Or? Yeah, sure. Okay, and I'll answer that we'll go through that. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Well, Don, too, you know, be always on his Yeah. Sheesh. Typical. And alrighty. Okay. First thing we'll do is let down the key or let down the springs, make sure they're let down. 
Okay, push this click out of the way. Yeah, that one's all the way down. check to see if it would uh, run at balance wheel and the escape gear won't turn at all so there's probably a bad bushing so we need to take these two screws out well maybe stuff is pretty delicate. Okay, lift that out of there. And there is the balance wheel assembly. I'll we'll set that in a bucket over there. And I guess the best thing to do right now then is to take the uh, Take the hammers off. Hammer mechanism. This is all going to fall apart when we get those screws out. These are fun to put back together. And I think the thing to do on these is to get a separate container. Mechanism all in one separate container. it in now that makes it easier to put back together and then we're going to have these to take off so let's mark these in case there's a difference in the yeah there is a difference in where the holes are so we want to mark these with the uh, right front left front okay I'll take those off in a minute all right strike mechanism I might as well let's see take that one off take that one off take this one off those are all 
this one is held on with a screw and uh, hmm, maybe we'll loosen that. That's really tight. There we go. C-clip, or E-clip, I guess, and let me screw it over. Okay, that E-clip is going to go in with the strike mechanism, that comes off. And this one is also held with a E clip. You push them with a long those pliers. Pull it off. E clip is in there. Now that gear comes out. Okay, this lever is also held with an E clip. I'll take it off and get it out of the way. everything out of the way on that side. Now let's go to the other side. And we start taking levers off. Let's see, do we want to go closer? So we can see a little bit. Okay. And then it's just a matter of... Now let's get all of the pieces off that go to the... Oh. We go to the springs. Let's make this our this will be our run side. This will be our strike side, and this will be the chime side. So we'll put the chime side in here. We'll put the, screw out. This comes off. And the cog comes off. These are all rights, right wind. Okay, on some models the clicks will come off but won't here. These are riveted in. Disassemble the the snail and the intermediate wheel by taking off this E clip and that washer. If I can see it, let me see. Let me switch glasses here for a bit. Okay. Oh, that's a big E clip. 
Oh, that's a big scissor. Big, big one. Okay. Good size one. Let's see. Put that in here with the motion works. That washer comes off. And the snail comes off. The intermediate wheel comes off. Okay. Now to get the rack off, there's another E-clip there. It's a small one. So remove it. rack comes off and now we've got this lever it has a spring on it and it also has an e-clip This one now I gotta get my forceps. Take a look at this spring. Okay, I came off with that. Okay. And now we've got some. We've got another lever down here that's got to come off. We've got this set of levers here that has to come off. That's a big E clip. Okay. That won't come off until I get this off, this cam off. So we will take a look at the set screws up now. Let's see if we can turn those set screws. I don't have a hard time seeing them. <clears throat> yeah, that's typical. They're really tight, so then you have to. There's a little leverage to loosen them. Still didn't get it loosened a little better. Screwdriver. Let's try this one. You know what? Might be helpful to get rid of this front plate first. Just get it out of the way. If we can get our screwdriver in there a little easier. Okay. No, I can't turn it. I gotta get some leverage on that screwdriver. Uh, 
Oh, that one came loose a little easier. Yeah, that comes off. Okay. Now these levers will come off. Well, that one has a... That's right, this one was held on by a screw that's on the inside of the plate. So, we loosen this. slides and this will slide out and keep them track of these we'll put that the retainer back on okay and now the lift lever here has a small e clip Come on. Hmm. It's tight too. Tight fit too. Well, that should come right off, but it's tight. I'm gonna have to pry it with a twist of a screwdriver, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. I can get off. It's a dust cover here for the looks like the fork. Oh man, that's Okay, that's all we can get off. The center, center one will not be able to get off without a puller. So we take these two nuts off, and that will get us ready to take the plate off. Or not? Well, that one's not going to 
cooperate. Now this is going to create a mess because this isn't going to want to come out. And what's going to happen is it's going to stay in the plate. When I pull it, it's going to yank a bunch of gears loose. So we'll just try to be as careful as we can. Let's see, make sure there's not one going on the other side. Okay. No. Okay, here we go. Take this plate loose. Let's catch it on those. Yeah, it's catching in there. Gears are gonna become flying all over here in a minute. I wonder how hard that would be to get that off of there. Generally, there's a dead gum tight. Yeah, that's too bad. I don't want to mess with it. Okay. Yeah, it's slowly getting there. Well, not particularly fond of it. All right. There we go. And this chime, why is that so? Whew, let's see. Oh, there's really a lot of gum and corrosion on that. Oh, there we go. Okay. And now, should be able to lift the rest of this off. It's like it's glued together. So this is our chime. That's a strike, and that's our strike. And this is our time. And that comes off. Okay, now I can get the spring out. There we go. All right. Then we will have fun. Feels very gummy, very sticky. Okay, time to show you when you don't pay attention to what you're doing. Sat here and struggled trying to get this apart to get those damned springs out of there. In reality, these armlies are made once you take off the click, uh, the ratchet wheel. All you got to do is just take. Twist those, take out the winding stem, and the spring slides right out from between the plates. So, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Anyway, when this goes back together, the easy thing is put all the, the gears in. Before you put the hammers on, put the gears in, and then you can go put the main spring back in. Take the winding arbor and uh, take the winding arbor, get it started. This one's a little sticky yet. And uh, put it back in like that. Put the click back on, the retainer back on, and that spring will stay in there. So. Again, that's a real simple matter to remove the springs from these hermlies is to work out the winding arbor and slide the springs out. So pay attention to what you're doing when you're working on these clocks. Parts to the chime side 
the actual chime mechanism, the time side, middle, gears, and levers, and the strike side. So we got them all apart, now it's time to start cleaning. Okay, here's what's stamped on it. It says letter A at the top, <clears throat> according to the charts and dating uh, Hermley movements. This was the first year that they started using a letter to designate the year, and that was 1988. So this movement was made in 1988. And, uh, okay, looking at the the run side or the uh, chime side I don't see any arbors or pivot holes that uh, I could possibly justify having to to rebush. I think this one's just a matter of being dirty and we're gonna make sure we clean it. And because these plates are lacquer covered, I'm uh, not going to put them in my uh, ultrasonic cleaner that has an ammoniated cleaner in it. What I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to use soapy water. I'm going to scrub them, rinse them, hand dry them, hand clean them, and uh, Make sure the grease gets out of them. Completely degreased and clean. That's really all they need. Oh man, I can see the oil running. Grease running out of the oil holes. And that's how we'll do them. Clean the whole thing this way. Just a mild scrub. We'll get into the pivot holes of the I'll take a toothpick and we'll get into the pivot holes. Like so. With soapy water. And that's gonna clean them. We'll do the same thing with the gears. And just get all the gunk out of the, all the holes. You don't want to do a commercial cleaning. What we'll do is then we got to take the springs out of the water. Rinse good. And then we can dry them. Toothbrush. And just get 
get all of the sticky oils and what have you off. Scrub each one. And that's what we'll end up doing. Spring winder. <clears throat> All right, we'll put the key that fits in here. Put this on here. Put the spring in here. Key winder goes that end. This on here. Tighten that down. I can use a leather glove whatever but you get a hold of the cogs on this thing and we wind it up and once it's wound up I have it back down I can't see what I can hole or slot that's in this have to go over the why well, okay there it is okay wind this up again get as far as it goes get this in here put that on as far as it goes and then we'll put this down <clears throat> the spring is now in this container which we got to take out of here I'm turn that around and see if we can get it on here sometimes it's hard to get them out but thing slides out. Now you get the spring out of the barrel. And I can clean the inside of the barrel. I can put this in the spring winder and get it out of this retainer. And once it's out of the retainer, then I have the spring all let down. So I'll turn this around and we'll let the spring down. It always makes me nervous. in here oops uh, put this hook over here first okay okay all the way in crank it down wrong hook up until that is tight enough that I can slide this off and I flip the switch on this and I let the spring all the way down okay. the 
spring has now opened up. What's in this? Take this out. And now we have the spring free and we can clean it and re-oil it. And now I'm taking spring lubricant. And we're going to spray it on here. I'm going to put this all the way into the leaves. Make sure they're covered completely. Okay. Don't shake out any excess. Let it drain a little bit. And then we'll put this back into the barrel, but I want to clean the barrel first. So wipe it out good. Also clean the outside. Okay. And okay. Now to get this back in, I'll do just the opposite. I'm gonna put the hook in here. Do the loop. Put the winding end into the key. This on here. I'm going to tighten it up. Alright, so we get the hook in, got this on here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to wind this spring up again. And I'll keep a rag here ready if I need to hold anything in line. edge of the retainer with the edge of the spring and as we need to bottom that out in the in the barrel keep this as far up in there as we can makes it easier to get the spring on is back into the retainer. Excess oil gets squeezed out and spring is back on the retainer. I'll wipe it off now. Get a lot of oil running out of it. get this back into the barrel so we get there's the hook on the barrel and here's the loop the hole it's got to go over that so we kind of try to line those up and See the edge of the spring on the hole, and now I can put this back in the spring winder and just tighten this up until I can pull the retainer out, let the spring back down, and we'll have that spring back in. I'll turn this around again. Yeah. Do I get this back in 
here. Close this back up tight. Now this is where we have to use the towel again or a leather glove. And let me see if I can move this over here. I can see that a little better. Grab a hold of the cogs. We're going to hang on tight. Make sure everything's tight. Ready to go. Rubber. Just winding. Okay, that's as tight as it goes. Pull the retainer out. Flip the switch. And let it back down. And let's bring it back in the barrel. Like so. Now we got to put the cap on. Uh, we'll turn this back around this way. And <sighs> it always makes me nervous dealing with the springs. If they decide to let go, it can really be a lot of fun. Okay, we're going to put this like so. And let's make sure that everything is in there. And we'll wipe out any oil that's coming to the surface. Okay, re-oiled. The cap goes back here. And then we got to snap that back on. Now, if this doesn't work, I'll take this over to my bench in the other room that has a wooden uh, vise on it. But normally you can get these back in this way. Uh -huh. Here's a block of wood. in place. One more spring <coughs> re-lubricated. Ready to go. I already done one more. Just have one more to go and we'll be done with those. Okay, put the time gears back in. Put the spring back in and hooked things up to the front. The click. And uh, just going to test run this for a while, make sure everything runs. Seems to be running okay. Okay, strike side gears are all back in. Temporarily put the spring back in, set it up. And uh, everything runs fine. Check pivots, nothing's worn. And then everything runs smoothly. Now all I gotta do is check out the chime side. Okay. <laughs> I have to say, I've never seen a hammer assembly this bad. Uh, when we lift these hammers, I can feel the resistance in them. Uh, they should let go and they should just freely drop. Well, here's the problem. They are so stiff. They don't move at all. Man, that... I don't know what kind of oil was used in this, but it's turned to nothing but gum. And uh, these are so stiff they don't move at all. So I'm going to take this apart. Take the clip off. Remove all these hammers clean this thoroughly and uh, they should like I say they should fall freely and uh, that's what they do they they just stick now there's part of the problem with this movement in the meantime I've got the chime side gears back in set up the spring and it's running very freely So we'll be 
I don't see any wear in it and uh, so we'll take these this back apart and then we'll put all everything back in and we can put this movement back together okay I took this apart cleaned it and now <coughs> the uh, hammers are no longer stuck <coughs> <sighs> they fall the way they're supposed to nothing's sticking anymore lift them up now and they fall away <coughs> oh, something got me sneezing this morning here's for the hour and then here's boom 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 all done Everything falling the way it should, that'll work a lot better. Okay, we get the gears back in place. We put the uh, the main wheels in, the spring wheels in, the barrels, and after the plates are put back together. Okay, we got the gears all in, plates back on. And now it's time to put the the uh, spring barrels back in. And I'm going to try to explain a little bit about putting this uh, chime mechanism back together. There's two cams that are going to be put on here. And uh, as these are put back together, right, you're going to have all kinds of problems. One cam that can cause considerable problem is the little one that goes right here and that's this little puppy now I've seen them put on the clock with this pin this pin right here facing outward and the set screws facing outward and I've also seen them put on this way with the set screws facing inward. With the set screws outward it's easier to tighten those set screws. However, it also makes it easier for this lever right here to rub on this larger surface of that cam. Now if that happens you're going to have difficulty in having it stop and lock on the quarter hours because the part normally you'd think of a pin on a wheel in between the plates as this pin is right here as being what causes the locking after a quarter hour or a strike or what have you this pin on that wheel has one function only and that's to move against uh, a lever during the warning phase the actual place that the, the chimes on the quarter hour are stopped is this notch right here this notch has to drop down far enough that it can catch this pin that's what actually stops the striking on the quarter hours. It is not a pin on a wheel inside there. And uh, so there's, you got to make sure that, first of all, setting this up, that the pin on the warning wheel is at top. Give it enough movement because the, the lever that catches it is inside at this point right here and uh, so we need to have it rotate enough that the pin on this cam can be released from this notch as this is being lifted that that pin will rotate enough that it can't just lock it immediately okay so we need to take well, what I since this has a smaller diameter on the inside I should, I'm going to put the pin 
this way. First of all, okay, the pin is going to go on this way. Maybe. Okay. Okay, there's the locked. There's the lock position. And uh, we have to kind of watch out because there's another lever that's going to go on here. And that's this one. And it's going to go on top here. And this is the lever that locks things up so that it can also go over on the top of that pin. But it locks things at the three-quarter hour and uh, is part of the mechanism for correcting a strike if things get out of strike. So we need to have those two things like that in that position. We need to tighten them down. If I turn this around and I push it on far enough, I can get this thing to clear this back lever. But sometimes it'll drag. And if that happens, then the lock notch is not going to drop down far enough and this thing's going to just keep chiming and chiming and chiming and chiming and chiming. Uh, there was a thread on the uh, NAWCC concerning a fellow that just had this problem several years ago and that's what caused probably caused the problem was dragging of this lever somewhere that uh, caused it not to, for that to not drop down and lock things up. So we put this on so that both the correcting mechanism hook is in there and the hook on the back lever is on that, that same is on that same pin. Now that locks everything up. That would be how it would look when this other cam, this one here, is in position, this cam here, is in position at the end of the third quarter. Okay, so here's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and four quarters an hour. So there's an extra lift here so that the follower on this one, which is this little pin right here, so that that follower is just after the three-quarter strike, which would be right there like that. And you'll notice there's a little hook hanging down on the back here of that lever right here. And where is that going to go? That's going to be in when this is at the end of the, when this is at the end of the three-quarter slot. You'll see that this back cam has a a notch taken out of it. That's what allows the time correcting hook to fall all the way down in at the end of the three quarter hour. And that's when the chime correction takes place. So I'm going to tighten this up, then I'm going to put this on, and then we will tighten this up when we have this set to the three quarter hour. Okay, so now we have the warning pin is at the top. This quarter hook, stop hook, is on the pin. And this little wheel is tightened. Okay. This piece then goes on here. And that hook is in position on that pin. Okay. And this then needs to be put on. And needs to be put on so that that follower is in at the end of the three-quarter strike, which is this, this part of the cam right here. So we're going to 
to make sure that that set screw was undone. And when we put this on, that follower should be right there. That hook on the back of this one should be in that little notch. And we don't want to put it in so deep that this lever is going to rub on it or we're going to have interference. So we need to make sure that we keep it out toward the end here and uh, then tighten those those nuts down. I can't do that with a camera in a way. Okay, so that's on. It's tightened. It's at the end of the three-quarter strike. Both of these hooks are now on that pin. And we've got to put a C-clip here to retain these. Uh, try to do it with the camera in a way. Okay, got it. Now I'm leaving the rack off for right now so you can see how this is going to operate. I'm going to wind this side. the strike side. I can see the whole thing. All right. Make sure that we're not up on a cam right now, which I think we're not. Okay. Now, the way this operates is that this lift leather, lever here, is lifted by the minute hand cam and it gets lifted just enough it goes into warning and then when the lift lever drops off of that minute hand cam it can now strike the hour now let's release both of those this is gonna that second rise biggest rise now it's going to set the strike side, and now it strikes the hour. And notice the quarter hour stop. If there's any rubbing that would prevent this lever from falling back down far enough to catch the hook, then the quarter hour chime wouldn't stop. It'd just keep chiming and chiming and chiming and chiming. Okay, so now on a f one quarter hour, it's going to lift enough, go into warning. And it's going to strike the quarter hour and stop. Half hour comes, this gets lifted, goes into warning, falls off the cam, and now it strikes the half hour or two bars. Notice that this hook is still too high to stop everything because it's it's got a little piece over here that can't fall, it's being prevented from dropping down by a cam on the back of this of this quarter hour cam. When it finally gets to the point where it can drop into that depression at the three quarter hour, this will fall down and lock things up completely. Okay, so here we go. We're going to three quarter hour now. Warning. Now it's striking three quarter hour. Now watch this. It's going to fall now. There it goes. And it's now deep enough to catch that hook. All right, now, <clears throat> that's a correcting mechanism. Because the only thing that's going to lift this off of that hook is the bigger cam at the hour. When this goes to strike the hour, and the cam that's on the minute wheel is, is a bigger one. The other three for the three quarter hour, half hour, three quarter hour, the cams are short. The only one that's longer on that minute hand cam or star, star cam, whatever you want to call it, uh, is the hour. So now we're at the hour. That cam will lift not only to go into the quarter hour like it did before, it goes into warning. I gotta make it go. Lift, goes into warning. 
but it also lifts high enough now to lift that uh, locking mechanism out so that now it can strike the hour strike the hour chime set the strike side release it and now the hour strikes okay now what we have to do is we have to put the we have to put the uh, rack back on that goes on here. Well, maybe it goes on there. There's a little spring that I have to kind of get out the way to slide that on. And we'll get that hooked okay. back. So now we're going to watch a proper sequence. If you'll notice, the cam now here, the quarter hour cam, is set as just finished the hour. Our minute hand is on the hour. Notice this hook is not engaging the pin. But you can't see it, but the hook on the back of this one is engaging that. Uh, thing and we've got the warning pin at the top say so time goes on as it approaches the 15 minute the lever starts to lift things mechanism goes into warning and it now strikes the quarter hour and the pin on the back of this engages the hook on that back lever. That stops the quarter hour strike. Now we come up to the half hour. Again, we go into warning and releases. It strikes twice. Lever on the back, you notice, is the one that drops down when this follower falls in after the after the strike and the nut the hook on this lever in the back this lever here is what stops the quarter hour chiming okay we get to the three quarter hour things go into warning and now we're going to when this drops off the minute cam this follower will follow the three quarter hour and another thing that will happen is the notch that's on the back of this uh, complex will allow that to fall in. And this hook will also hook the, uh, the pin on the back of this. Striking. It's chiming now. Now watch this hook fall down. It's going down far enough now that it can grab that hook. All right now everything is locked up. The only thing that will allow this to be unlocked is when this goes to strike the hour, the large cam at the hour will lift that high enough that everything can be reset like so. Okay. Now it's chiming the hour, the four quarters of the hour. This extra lift here will now lift to set the hour strike, the striking mechanism, and now it can strike. The rack is lifted until the teeth are done, and this cam can fall in and hit the, uh, the stop pin. All right now what's the whole purpose of that locking mechanism let's say that we're supposed the next thing is supposed to be the three the quarter hour strike I'm going to move this very rapidly so that it goes to the three quarter uh, yeah I'm now at the half hour okay it struck the quarter hour 
on the half hour. Now, what's going to happen is when I get to the three-quarter hour, it's going to strike the half hour. And that's not good. It's out of sequence. All right, when we get to the three-quarters, this is on the hour, it's actually going to reset at this point. Oh, we're doing a three-quarter. It's striking three-quarters, and it's locked. All right, now, what's going to happen now is that when we, because this hook is on that pin, when I get to the quarter hour, nothing's going to happen. No strike. No chime. Because that's keeping it from doing it. When I get to the half hour, no chime. When I get to the three quarter hour, no chime. But now when I get to the hour, everything can reset. Now it's going to chime. It's chiming the hour now. The four quarters. Lifting to strike. And it's done. That is now corrected. This thing being out of sequence. So that now. Let me finish striking. One more. Now I want to go to the quarter hour, because that hook isn't down there, it's going to strike. Well, it's going to chime, I mean. Chime is a quarter hour. When I get to the half hour, it's going to chime the half hour. And now let's... Uh, Let's knock this all out of whack again. Okay, I just pushed it all the way over to the quarter hour. And what's it doing? It's striking the three-quarter hour. But it's locked up now. Because that thing has dropped behind a pin. So now when I go to the half hour, nothing will happen. When I go to the three-quarter hour, Nothing's going to happen. And now when I go to the hour, everything is reset. So it chimes the hour, the four quarters of the hour. In other words, that thing locking that up allows the hour hand, or the minute hand, to catch up to the proper quarter. It's a self-correcting mechanism. Now it strikes. Let's speed this whole thing up. Okay. So, when we go to the quarter hour now, everything is back in normal order. There we go. The problem that was shown was in, was a fellow was having that I saw in the NAWCC forum a couple years ago was that he thought this pin had to be bent. Most of the time what it is is this thing has been put on the other way, maybe not pushed on far enough, and this lever can actually catch on this, this uh, uh, circumference, or it, it's not pushed on far enough and the back of this lever rubs on this thing and prevents this from falling down far enough to stop the uh, quarter hour chiming. So you just have to make sure, and or these can get bent a little bit. You gotta make sure this isn't on too too far. Uh, you, you can't allow it to be, be rubbing. Just gotta make sure that all these levers, that this lever isn't rubbing on that one, that they're all nice and straight, everything is lined up, and you're ready to go. But the important thing in setting these up is Make sure that warning pin is up here somewhere, has enough, because it's going to get caught over here when it goes into warning. Inside the plates gets caught about this position. Have enough time to rotate 
that this thing or any of these hooks can move out of the way of that pin. Otherwise it's going to lock itself right back up again if there's not enough movement going into warning. So uh, that's, uh, that's what you do. You get this pin up here. You put these two, uh, put this on so that both of these hooks are on that pin behind there. You know that then that, when those two hooks are in that position, that's where it would be at the three-quarter hour. So then you set this one at exactly the three, right after the three-quarter hour strike. And then it's all lined up exactly the way it should be. So if you want to see what that would look like, I'll put this to the finishing the three-quarter hour. That's half hour. And then we go to three-quarter hour. So when you're setting up the, the chime mechanism on this particular, this, these, this Hermley movements, here's where you want them. You want this, the pin that's on the back of this one to be vertical so that this hook and the hook on this lever, it's in that arch back there, the hook on that lever, oh, if I lift this, you can probably see it. See it back there? We can see that in there. Probably not. Okay. Anyway, that hook needs to be on that lever. That hook needs to be on that lever. So both those hooks have to be on that on that pin. And this follower has to be, this piece has to be put on so that the follower has just finished the three-quarter hour strike. When you have that set up that way, it'll be in perfect timing. And then just uh, the uh, minute hand has to be put on so that it, uh, it's on uh, in, in relation to the, the uh, highest cam, the hour cam, because that's where everything gets corrected right here at the hour. When that high cam lifts everything, then uh, it catches up to where it ought to be. I know that's kind of a cumbersome explanation, but that's the way the puppy works. So the normal sequence, after this is done striking, two more strikes yet. Now it'll stop. Okay. Normal sequence is quarter hour, half hour, three quarter hour. and the hour. So it self-corrects at the hour. And you might say, well, why would ever be wacko in the first place? Well, let's speed this up. Let's just assume that you forgot to wind it and the chime side runs down before the time side so I'm going to simulate that by putting my finger on the fan All right now it's set it should be chiming the next time it should chime the quarter hour but the spring has run down so the clock goes past the quarter hour nothing happens because the spring run down now we get to the half hour and nothing happens and I come out here and wind the clock. Okay, so now, coming up here, and it should strike the three-quarter hour. Instead, I just wound it. So instead of striking the three-quarter hour, it just struck the quarter hour. So now I get to the hour. And on the hour, it just struck the half hour. 
Okay. Now we get to the quarter hour. And it's striking three quarters. But at that point, that little puppy goes down there and locks things up. And it locks things up until this gets to the next hour. So now when I get to the half hour, nothing's going to happen. When I get to the three quarter hour, nothing's going to happen. But when I get to the hour, we've just allowed that to catch up with things. And it's now striking the hour and quarters. And now the actual hour, one o'clock. And now when I get to the quarter hour, everything's back as the way it should be. Just struck the quarter hour. And at the half hour, it struck the half hour. So it's, uh, it's self-correcting. Somebody forgets to wind the clock, things get out of whack, you don't worry about it. Too often you find people, what they'll do is they'll, they'll try to, oh, it just struck the quarter hour and it's actually the half, and they'll move the hand. Then nothing gets back, because you don't have this, this in the right position, the hand in the position with the, the high cam on the, on the, uh, the, cam on the um, minute shaft. So you've got, uh, leave it alone, and within the second hour, it'll have corrected itself. So everything's back the way it should be. And it's ready to go. Okay, I've got all the levers back on, everything adjusted. And the uh, strike is going to operate just fine. Okay, now I'll run it on the test stand here. There we go. Warning. Quarter hour. Dong, 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 dong. Okay. Half hour. Okay, I'm going to set three quarter hour. Okay, that's it. It's 10 to 5. So we're just going to let this run for a little while and uh, see how she does. Then we can think about putting it back in the case after I clean the case. I'm putting it back in the case. There are four screws or bolts that hang come from the dial through the case. And then I have to put. Uh, nuts on those.